Hello and welcome to the first episode of my Let's Play on Scourge of War Gettysburg, following the Battle of Gettysburg from the very beginning to the very end. In this episode, we'll be looking at the first scenario, which is the first shots, where I take command of Colonel William Gamble's cavalry in the early skirmishing of 730. You can see my troops are set up along the Chambersburg Pike, waiting to be engaged, and here come our orders now. Colonel Gamble, scouts report the enemy is advancing along the Chambersburg Pike. I expect we will be facing superior numbers, so you may find it necessary to pull back to a new position. I have marked some points on the map accompanying this message. Your brigade is hereby detached until further notice, and so you are free to command your troops as you see fit without interference. Now that I have my orders, I'm going to form, my, form these first squadrons into two lines along the road. The first line to basically blunt the advance of the rebels, and then the second to act as either reserve or to counterattack and to hit the rebels on their flanks. Don't know how fast the rebels are going to get here, so I probably should take Confederates over rebels, but same thing really. So I don't know how fast I'm going to ma make it here, so I'm going to move my troops quickly, move to flank on the other side of the road. And I want to buy as much time as I possibly can, so I'm going to the first two units and use them until they break and then move out the second two. At least that was the plan. Let's see how that holds up. I move my troops in the line because skirmish formation doesn't really do a heck of a lot according to the forms. Anyway, here's here's the first of the uh, rebels, General Archer, heading leading his brigade. Now another. I quickly move my men into line. I find. As our regiment rushed into the turnpike opposite the Rochester regiment, we saw a great column of playback stretching back for miles. I didn't fancy our chances. The sergeant must have seen my nervous looks and said to me, "They may have the numbers, but we can shoot as fast as four of them with our carbines." Now the engagement begins. What time is it now? 7.31. Why? I'm taking this down in my journal. The first shot in the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863, at 7.31. Battle? This is but a mere skirmish, sir. Did I say battle? I meant to say skirmish. But what is a skirmish but a small battle? Fair point. Wait, where did you go? Was it a rebel spy? I think it was a rebel spy. How strange. Anyway, now that you engage from the full swing of things, I have my two regiments moving, but now a couple more brigades show up, or a couple more regiments show up, not brigades. Now I have to put in my reserve or else I'd be flanked. So I form them into line. Skirmish formation is too, too wieldly to, or unwieldy even, to use. But the rebels begin to advance. Sir, they're getting too close. We should pull back. Sir, Captain Donaldson, sir, the Rebs. They're getting too close. Can you hear me, sir? For whatever reason, the scenario, they just advance without impunity, if that's the right word. So I pull them back to the main, to the crossroads, to form up with the other troops and to support them. Get them all. Oh, we bloody got, lads. Come on. That's all the troops I have for now. So I'm holding the point successfully. You're supposed to have one officer and some troops nearby a, a point in order to hold hold it to get points. And also, for every enemy killed, that's one point for us. But for every casualty we take, it's one minus point. And you'll see by the end of this battle, this one is messy, for especially for my men. Here's a lovely close up. But I will I will admit that I am using the mod to make the uh, the main man look a little nicer. Let me assault game.
Our squadrons are getting cut to pieces out there. You and you. Tell the commanders to form on the main road and provide a strong front against those rebs. So by this time I'm reforming on the road in order to make a strong front to push as much fire as I can into the rebel ranks. Just so, they, so my men don't get flanked or anything like that. But there are far, far too many rebels than we can honestly take out. So I'm just quickly rushing them back. Now, just a quick note, they, our troops are not using Spencer repeaters. There goes, I can help my men. But we are using single shot sharps and burn side carbines. Or the Spencer repeater repeating rifles. In this point of the war, they are being ordered by the Union troops, but they have not arrived yet. Now, I don't know when they arrive, they, they, but they do not see, see service in this battle, contrary to a romanticism, along with trying to get shoes. That's also not part of this battle. So by this point, my line is beginning to crumble because the rebels, so there's far too many and they're just advancing. And this one of cavalry, it does not do well in, in melee. But at closer range, such as right now, you can see, as you see, they'll do a little better. But really at this point, numbers are really, are more than anything doing the damage. So by this point, I just decided to cut my losses, or as much as I can anyway and pull back since I've lost the point. Damn that, the line is broken. I will try to get as many squadrons as I can to reform at the first retreat point. You two tell the remaining commanders to pull back to the first retreat point. In the meantime, you take this to Captain Fowler and tell him we need his support to hold the first retreat point. Yes sir, the rest of you follow me, we are pulling back to the retreat point. making the window a little bit bigger so I can see a bit better. Currently watching this in my editor, so worse quality than what than you'll all get. Yeah, my line is just utterly shattered at this point. You can see now by the uh, clear shield that I'm not getting any points from, from there anymore. So in the next position, I have a little bit better terrain, I, as well as the a little stream to slow down the rebels if they try to advance. But luckily, the rebels are sporting, and they give us a few minutes to, to pick ourselves up and, and gather ourselves at the retreat point. Anyway, you can see I have some woods for my troops to take cover in, as well as a small stream off to my left, as well as I have reserves that I brought up, or I might have brought up, but unfortunately I just completely forget that I even have them. Those flags are where my troops will reform. Oh, not sorry. Now is where I bring up the reserves. As you can see, the rebel forces are more concentrated on the road.
I see that these troops on the far flanks probably never, not even going to see service. So I begin to concentrate my troops in line here and into the uh, wheat field so that they'll have some cover. But it's not really cover, they're just hiding amongst the wheat. So it's more Confederates can't see rather than actual cover. So 3rd Indiana, I moved them up the forward wheat field. I didn't deploy it, it's not technically a forward wheat field. The wheat field there. And then the 12th Illinois 3rd Squadron in reserve behind them. I did play this battle a, a couple times, well not a couple times, but yeah, probably about a couple times before because I was still testing out OBS because I was just learning learning the system, crashed or ran absolutely crappily. So I have put my troops in the woods just off to the uh, right side of the point very long, and, and when they did, they just get surrounded, they rout, in which case I won't get them back, so it's no point. So I concentrate my troops in the wheat field here. That'll be very important in a few moments. I won't tell you why. You'll find out. Also, put my troops in the high ground, because that'll give us an advantage too. So you, you can see by the score right now, my troops aren't exactly faring that well. So I gather these troops from, from the line. Put my troops in column for now so they can rest up a tiny bit. You can see they're already tired and their bottom purple bars, they're how tired they are. The top one's morale. As I said, the rebels are sporting. They're giving us a few minutes to collect ourselves before they make a second assault. Thankfully, I'm playing against a computer and not a natural human. They probably wouldn't give me any moment of respite, so also probably would have hit me a heck of a lot harder. But here they come, headed by the uh, first tennis. How lo lovely little close up. Now, at this point in the war, the Confederacy is starting to change their uniform because of lack of supplies. It's not just the gray uniforms made for, with uh, vegetable dye, but butternut brown uniforms. Don't know what the dye is made out of, though, so I may look that up later. Come back to you later on that one, probably. The next episode, maybe. We'll see if I remember. I'm going to focus my troops around the housing, so if the uh, rebel troops get tangled up around the buildings. That was my hope when I moved my troops up to the uh, stream and buildings. Move them up in column, they move a little faster, and they, uh, they'll rest up while they move. So the symbols there, the binoculars and the uh, plus sign on the square, are showing the buffs and debuffs. So the, uh, the binoculars are for a debuff saying that the enemy can see us, so that's a debuff. But the square with the plus sign in it is supporting bonus. So I get a bit of in the star that you saw earlier, that would be rallying to the star, or sorry, the flag. The green flag there was rallying to a commander. The green flag, sorry, the green flag there was rallying to a commander, and the star there is for being nearby a commander. So more bonus points. You also be noticing this is a modded toolbar because I'm using the, uh, the bugles and flags mod, a new toolbar with new stuff, as well as some new abilities as well, and new flags and bugles. Fancy that.
moving these troops in reserve so I can actually capture the point. I have to use this poor, poor little third squadron and to hold off the onslaught of rebels. You see now the difference, the the regiment in the back with the more traditional grey uniforms and the two unif another regiment moving up to the front in butternut uniforms. One of the weird things in this game, at least to me, is that the uh, officers you can't the officers can't get shot. But if you charge them in melee, then you'll capture or kill them, I think as the game puts it. These carbines are damn useless. We can't hit anything with them. Why bother use them if we can shoot twice as fast as infantry if they can kill our boys at four times the number? We need to fall back. And fall back I do because I don't have really much choice. But anyways, when the rebels were suddenly broke into a run there it's because they took a casualty, you can see them in the far right. Yeah, right. They can't do directions. I mean, you can see there, they have to advance up past the building, because in this game... Yeah, so you can see uh, these troops are running, but they're slowed down slightly by the stream. Oh no, not the stream. Something. I don't know what they're slowed down by. Oh no, that is the stream. Sorry. Pull my men back because I don't want to get them in melee. Unfortunately, they retreat without being mounted, so they'll be a little slower. One of the interesting things about this battle, I think, or at least the early part of the battle, is how the rebels thought they were engaging with militia. At least that's the report that Heath gave. But how would they be militia if they were moving so quickly and shooting so quick? I don't know. If you know, put it in the comments, I guess. It'd be kind of cool to learn. Uh, I presume that the commanders on the ground would, would know otherwise, but by the uh, pinnets that the cavalry held, likewise. And here you can see an example of the units getting tangled up in the building, and probably them advancing uh, forward this quickly is probably a scripting thing. That's why they're just running past my troops and not engaging. Being at the point, they quickly form up, or at least as quick as they can. Hurry up, there we go. And they form up to attack my men. And they're, they're getting the surround on us. And you can see again, uh, General Archer is wandering past my troops with absolute uh, no ignorance of getting, his, or getting blown away by his own units. And you can see I'm using skirmish formation in the, uh, in the wheat field out there, just to cover more ground, even though it's going to be quite unwieldy. You can see I mounted up these troops, luckily enough, so I hope he won't take as many casualties as the, as the other units. Damn, we were too late. They could not hold. Hopefully our line will hold position on the ridge a little longer. I do hope Ronald's Corps gets here sooner. We won't be able to hold it as a rebel onslaught. So unfortunately now, the rebels are shooting at my own men as they retreat, the blackouts. Luckily, the, my men get away before much damage is taken. So I formed mine here to add another regiment over onto the 
in the wheat field by the road, because uh, as we know, the scripting is just walk down the middle of the road and hope we don't get shot. Because it's based off the emo how the rebels probably would have acted in, in the actual battle, where it was they were expecting a, only a short little scuffle with some local militia, and then they would just go into the town and take whatever supplies they need. So anyway, I'm dismounting my troops here, preparing for the scrap with the rebels. Try to get whatever cavalry I can out of there before they rout. Bring Gamble back to the control point. Have the 3rd Indiana and the, I believe that's the 17th Pennsylvania? Nope, it's New York. Oh well. God, that, that must have been confusing in actual battles with uh, the real bugles with, when they're just playing over each other. Between that and couriers, that probably doesn't help with the uh, army communications. So this time, just forming up on the high ground, hoping that I can hold for a little bit longer than on the prior retreat point. As you can see, we have a bit of a high ground, so hopefully that'll help. Sneak my troops back into the wheat, form them up by the road. Just trying to make it nice and neat. Like I said earlier, just moving my men back in column so they can rest a bit. I mean, if I told them to walk by the road, they would go faster and rest up, which, I mean, makes sense kind of, but not really. Formed up by column. Really should have put the the uh, troops back there into in a column or line. The reserves behind the wheat field. I mean, see some of the positions for that we'll be using later. Now I noticed one of the units are on the far flank. Call for reinforcements. Take this to Captain Erickson. Tell him to move up at the double as our reserve. Yes, sir. Let's hope they get faster than you. Gamble's compliment, sir. Give it here. The situation must be more desperate than I thought. If his fresh troops need reserves. 45th Infantry, form column at the double. Forward, march. So a strange thing about the Indiana, Indiana regiments, they gave them infant for at least the cavalry, they gave them infantry designations as well, so that's why they're the 45th Infantry, as well as the 9th Indiana Cavalry. Don't know why this is, probably just standardization. So I rushed them along to as reserve. This time I won't forget about them, and actually put them in, put them to good use. So, so I tell them to go by the road, which is the arrow between the two lines on the toolbar there. You can see all the reserves I have, and there's tons of them. As well as a nice big stream to hold off any, any rebel advances. High ground, rocky terrain to move up, bridge, buildings to get them caught up on. Do a fair number on them when, once they make it there. Here comes our first target. Anyways, if you can see the faint eagles there, that's the path the other unit will take. Let's 
move in these units in a line and turn and move them up into the wheat field. Give the rebels one heck of a shock. Here comes the ninth, or third. It's the third, not the ninth. Don't know why I keep calling it the ninth. So instead I decided to move them up on the road to these block hold our center. We advanced seeing neither hard nor hair of the feathers until we approached a nearby wheat field and several explosions came from it. Looking a little closer, I can see feathers shooting and rushing back into the wheat field. I apologize for that horrible accent. If you're from, the, from anywhere and want to send a clip for these videos, if you want to be in the one of the snippets of these videos and not to relieve me of my horrible accents, if you can do a convincing southern accent, or if you're even better, if you're from the southern United States or the northern United States, or Midwest, Germany, Ireland, or can do, at least do a, a convincing accent, shoot me an email at forgottenfronts at gmail.com and I'll add you to the show. I'll hand you, I'll probably send you some uh, scripts, or if you want to, just put in the email what, what thing you want to be doing in the script. Anyway. a bit of a trap so you can see uh, the, this regiment just moves far far ahead much quicker than I thought they would you get shot in the side by one of our regiments but I sent these units by what I believe is a tavern at least said so on, on one of the maps I looked at or I could be confused and they got fired on from the wheat field then I have to reposition my troops a bit since they just don't fancy that firing position. Hurry up, hurry up, and there you go. So now they're getting shot on the three sides. Notice the regiment on the far, on the far left wasn't even shooting, so I move them up. And they're up nice and close. Advancement for our homes and families. Let's brush this militia from the road. They couldn't hit the broad side of the bottom with their shotguns. Sir, militia. To the left. Sir, we're by the tavern. My Luba is behind us, sir. It's I'm here. Apparently I missed a bit of my clip, but uh, first time doing this, so I had time to make a couple mistakes. And then we see General Archer, or it could be Davis. This is Archer just casually walking towards my, my line of fire. Oh well, ah, uh, man, like, the worst thing that can possibly happen. The morphs, Confederate troops, show up under Davis. This video is a heck of a lot larger than uh, Archer's. them back. Seven tenths of back, nice organized retreat, and they break. Picking off a few as they run away, decided to move some of these troopers to take shots at the others, as it was not really needed to fire on the others. Then they just up and just walk forward like nothing. Let's push that Yankee militia for the weak field. Shut them a real man later. Charge, bandits! Charge! They just up and charge their lines. Taking a handful of counties, of course. Fall 
die. Oh, well, I didn't actually before. I was using a new toolbar. One of these new abilities that the toolbar gives you is to choose where they get to retreat, and that which is the running soldier there that is highlighted, just above the eye and retreating, which allows you to choose where you retreat by first doing a move order and then timing to withdraw. Unfortunately, I didn't do this properly the first time, they just retreated right towards the enemy. Surprisingly enough, they didn't get captured and were forced to surrender. Anyway, seeing an opportunity to, to pick up a few more than Rebs, move my troops out from behind the tavern, and open fire on a small regiment. In the meantime, I guess our troops are just interrogating Archer. I don't know. He just decided to hang out with the uh, commander of my forces and a bunch of cavalry units. moving into range, and you can see one of my soldiers has to go all the way around my house before they can open fire. Might be able to see him there. Oh, there he is. Come on, move it, Johnson. Get in a position. Yeah, no, I had to keep a couple of troops to guard our flank against the uh, 5th Alabama battalion. Make sure they don't do anything funny. But unfortunately, again, my my right begins to crack, so I have to send up whatever reserves I have. So. The wary and tired troops that are just sitting in and wait to move them up to the high ground to hopefully hold just that little bit longer. Any tiny bit helps, especially against Davis's huge brigade. Apparently Archer is going to join us, trying to get all our tactics and the like. Anyway, I move up the 8th Illinois, 2nd Squadron, support the other squadron is there. Try and pick off as many as the 5th the fifth looks like in the damage, before we fall back. Unfortunately, you can see in the background there, the uh, troops that I forced back earlier have regrouped, but luckily they're not attacking yet. Suddenly out of the wheat field, the second Mississippi appears. So I make my troops ready. Fortunately, they're really tiny units against that massive brigade. We take a bunch of casualties already. You see, and I just drop in my flies. So I guess in the meantime, I don't really have the heck of a I have something to talk about. Is if you have any mods for the train in particular that I can add on that would look nice for Scourge World Dead Expert, put them in the comments. Wouldn't mind. I mean, the maps look good, don't get me wrong, but I mean, no such thing as a perfect game, or no such thing as a perfect game that users can improve. That first one is almost all gone, but they still fight on. If I live once this war is over, I would like to meet one of them and shake their hand. Their courage is boundless. Anyway, uh, as the uh, bar just said there, I didn't notice, but just now I zoomed in at the 5th uh, fifth, fifth of the battalion, and there's most of it is gone. Half of the entire rank is just down. Most of it. If you look closely on their uh, left flank as well, you will notice a few more go down before I zoom out. Zoom back into them, actually. 
but you can see Davis's brigade is still advancing as if we're not even there because his units are absolutely massive and afford to take the casualties. See, there, there they go. They come with a fun fly, but it's made the melee the first round. Nope, lost man. Come on. You can tell this guy, he probably in front, front poster or front page news of any southern uh, propaganda. That entire regiment will probably be made famous due to this engagement. I mean, must I mean, the regiment must take a lot of casualties in the in, uh, Chancellorsville probably. Is that a big battle? Or probably first one in Chancellor. Or second one in Chancellor. One of the one Chancellors. One of the uh, smaller battles before this. So I'm moving back the uh, 12th Illinois Cavalry just to keep it in range. I kind of mess up, try to form them up. See my units are already pulling back, so pull them back to the lead field if I can. Yeah, now there's nobody but the officer in the first run, and then they break. I was expecting, I don't know what I was expecting, but apparently the rebels are made of much sterner stuff than what I thought. Now I can see the uh, map, see that uh, just approaching the lap, the final, now it's called McPherson, not McPherson, McPherson's room. Forward boys, let's push these yet, he's back to Washington, forward, a double. So they are broken on the left. Should fall back or will be cut off. Alright, send orders to the commanders on the right flank to withdraw and reform on the other side of the run. I hope this was enough time for Murphy to fall on his defenses. And Reynolds to bring up his call. Now like the thing just said, I need to make an orderly retreat. Well, it's planned to be an orderly retreat. It turns into a route. So for most of my troops, it turns into a route. So I start using the telling them where to go, which is right by the next point. And you can see some units there, which is finally some artillery support. But anyway, falling back there is the A battery of the second US artillery. Now I need to pull down the back since I can't get any more points left. And you can see it's just carnage. Not too much for the rebels, except the two fifth Alabama battalion and the seventh Tennessee. Believe it was that we caught between those and that surround. Other than that, it's just hardly any casualties for the rebels. Just a bunch of casualties for others. Luckily enough, in this organized retreat, I managed to mount most of my troops, so they'll get to the next point in love. Seeing Gamble's vedettes coming up the line, moving into position without a word, looking almost haggard, along with many of his men, a similar looking figure moved with them on horseback. It was General Devon. Following behind these more able troops were the wounded, some just relieved that they could make it to the rear lines without being captured. Seeing the defeated vedettes with half their number didn't fill the boys with confidence before going into battle, but one thing that was different was that the ground before us was far more open than the vedettes had to hold. Rewrite that, but yeah, a lot of mistakes too, you know. But yeah, I'll probably focus on nailing, working on those slip ups for the next episode. And unfortunately, my troops don't want to use a bridge. I know, maybe you could rig them with explosives or something, but not a heck of a lot of time to wait, so my troops just mount up and cross the stream. Well, the run, Willoughby's run to be precise, but.
yeah, now we're in a really nice position. And you can see right there in the background, it's the second A battery of the second US artillery. The open fire, as we're not as sportsmanlike as the rebels, who will, who will allow us to set up our guns and set up a nice defensive position before, before we make an attack. And Butte and Gamble is going through the cannon line like nothing was even there. Absolute madman, I tell you. Madman. Anyway, let's start capturing that point. You can see there I have 703 points, and that's, according to my notes, exactly just, exactly just short, not exactly, from getting a major victory. Seminary Ridge was lined with the men and boys of the town to see the brush against the Confederates, not dreaming of the terrible conflict that was to occur that day. Now these civilian, uh, quote, little bits that I put it in are actual quotes from a book, I believe it's History of Pennsylvania, but I'll put the actual title in the, either in the description or in the film right now that I found. So they are actual witness accounts. Well, at least I tried to add in ones that would fit into the battle, unlike the soldier the soldiers accounts, of which I couldn't find a list of soldiers accounts, and also they probably wouldn't fit because compared to the actual battle, the soldiers accounts would be slightly different. So now I'm just forming up whatever troops I can on, on, on the main road and hope that we can hold. Now you can see I'm moving up some of the troops in those two, in that double line, as some of those troops are my troopers, I should say, not troop. well, they are troops, but it's not soldiers, but troopers for cavalry, but anyway, some of these troopers are, are my unit, are my squadrons, while the smaller other half on our far right flank, they're Devon's troopers, so I don't have command over them. Canada's just giving them a nice softening up. You can see all my troops are absolutely exhausted from the the, the uh, retreat. So I just gather them around the point so they can both get rallied and, and rest by gamble. The lesson was interrupted multiple times by students getting up to see the commotion of the pike and the bustling of a signal officer going to the roof. Amid repeated failures on the part of the class, our professor remarked, We will close to see what is going on, for you know nothing about this lesson anyhow. The students accompanied the signal officer eventually to see what was going on, when a cannonball to the I mean, in the actual battle, I don't know what cannons they're talking about, since, thankfully enough, I haven't been presented with the rebel artillery. But that might be something that I should have added for the later on episodes, where there will be the rebel artillery that will be facing us. But anyways, let's up the uh, troopers. Unfortunately, I might actually do it in the actual footage, but I accidentally move up one of the uh, unrested, low morale forces of, of my own to the front line. Luckily enough, I catch it later. So move them up into the wheat field, and then I think I move them up a little farther. Like I did earlier, I'm doing the double line formation, so I can use up the first line and then move in the second, second line, or just fall back the entire first line if needed. And the train only gets harder. It's first a small, slight incline, and then it's with against the uh, stream, and then it's a weak field that, that our troops can hide in and take pot shots out of. On the left, you can, or yeah, on the left brain, um, there's some rocks there that would be hard to climb, and then and all that even before they have to cross a river.
Over here you can see the rebel troops taking cover. One of the tactics you can use in this game is just use your cash to halt any, any advance from infantry. Because they will take cover. See which. The shell holes there. God, I mean, you gotta deal with potholes. I mean, imagine having to deal with shell holes in your road. So I move my men to take full advantage of the river. To get, so in case they advance again like last time, then I notice, yeah, the 8th, 3rd Squadron 8 New York is absolutely exhausted and they're really tired. And also I move up for, for a better fit, the uh, 12th Illinois, who've been it's a much smaller regiment, and fared a lot better than more, most of the regiments, taking out 30 of the rebel infantry, tr infantry men, infantry men. moving these troops off into the wheat. doesn't matter if your entire uh, regiment's in there, it just matters if the flag's touching the cover for your men to be officially to the game in cover. may or may not have said this before, but around now I'm or not, well, in a few minutes, I begin to panic, because in earlier playthroughs when the recording turned out to be rather garbage, so I discarded it, um, the scenario ends around now, but unfortunately they actually get to us. Unfortunately, if I had control of the uh, artillery battery, I'd be focusing telling each gun to focus on it, in particular rebel regiment so they can just halt their advance. Ah, you can see now I actually noticed that, hey, hold on a second, that, that regiment is absolutely tired as hell. We should move them out of line and move these boys in, because they're actually much better off. You can see in the background General Buford has come down from the, the cupola of the uh, Lutheran Seminary and decide to see the ground front as it were himself, as is himself. And, now this is the point where the scenario would end, as the uh, units approach the Willoughby's run. So I begin to slightly panic, so I don't know how long it's going to take, so I just know how long it will be from now. So I move with the units, form in the line, and prepare. Fortunately enough, they come off on an angle, and our boys can manage to get a, to get a couple shots in the flank. My god, they're trying to cross. There's only one way to do that, and that is in column across the bridge. They'll get cut to ribbons if they try to cross the cross the run. And cut ribbons they shall be. If you focus in on the uh, regiment, the uh, 13th Alabama trying to cross by the bridge, we have troops firing in their front and their right flank. They're, 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 they're significantly slowed down by the, by the river, and they allow us to get even more shots in the front. You see the, uh, the tr three people in the back by the White House because they, they were having to go around the house when they formed into line at a column. I'll slow them down even more. And like I said earlier, well, I might have said this earlier, I can't remember, but well, it's been a few minutes in between this in two parts here. But our boys can fire quite a lot quicker than they can. So they are forced back. So they get forced back across the street, or run, I guess you would call them. Don't really call them runs, at least where I am in Canada. Also, another thing is that I think they, I don't know if they show in the film or not is that some of the troops actually had to hold the reins of, of the horses, which makes sense.
so I'm trying to form a line again. Because that regiment on our far our far left flank is doing a lot of damage. So by this time another regiment comes forward and uh, so I rush the uh, 8th Illinois 2nd Squadron or 2nd Squadron 8th Illinois as most normal people would say it to try and get a flank on them hopefully push them back across the river so try to rush them up to the, the bridge itself and finally I get a shot but to no avail they manage to get across unlike the other battalion so I start to pull back the 8th uh, Illinois 2nd 4th Squadron but then they make a charge So I counter mount my troops and do a counter charge. And then we enter a vicious melee event. But like then After the heroic counter charge in the second squadron of the 8th Illinois, the exhausted rebels were pushed back temporarily, and the forward scouts retired, and the remainder of the division was dug in to hold back the next assault of Confederate units before a courier from Buford said that his troopers were ready to play their part in the in the battle coming their way. Now you can see my final score was 1,219 points, which is far over the amount that you need to win. But now, in case I didn't lose any possible point, and now in case I've lost any possible way to monetize this video, here's another clip from the film Gettysburg by Warner Brothers. Next time we'll be holding a with the rest of Buf Buford's cavalry, including Devon's brigade against the same two rebel brigades on some much nicer ground in wait for Reynolds' first corps to arrive. So I hope you've enjoyed this first installment of the Battle of Gettysburg series. Um, like I said, if you want to be part of one of the lovely little snippets that I had within the video, um, send in what part you want to be doing, or if you want me to send you some script for it, um, I can do that as soon as you, you tell me what part you want to play in, or if anything's good for you, or anything's good for you. And now, finally, and most importantly of all, only you can prevent horrible comedy accents that I can do. Only you. That's right, you. So send in those clips. Don't make me do these horrible, vo horrible accents. And as always, I hope you're having a good morning, afternoon, or evening. So long for now.